Hi, this is Laurent Thomas again for another tutorial about the plugins, about qualitative annotations and their analysis. So in this tutorial, I want to present you two uh, workflows that I proposed for the analysis from the annotation table. So the first one is quite simple, is uh, just to show you a bit uh, how to deal with NIAMP and it's simply to visualize the table and the image in NIAMP. So, um, as every workflow, it starts from the left to the right. So, the table is loaded via this CSV reader node. Uh, I think in the other workflow, sometimes I use the file reader, but the result is the same. So, you can right click, uh, select configure. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention the workflow. You, uh, you can simply download them from the GitHub repository. I will put the link in uh, the video description, and uh, you can also get the example data from. Zenodo, including the image and the table. So you can then uh, browse to get your CSV file. Uh, so any CSV file that was generated from the, the annotation plugin notes, uh, yeah, will work for this particular workflow, yeah. Um, so you, you can browse or you can copy past and validate. So in this case, um, yeah, it's already loaded in my case. Then in your case, it should turn yellow, this kind of traffic light. And uh, then you can do execute and open views, or just execute. And then if you open, if you selected open views, you will get a table automatically. Otherwise, you can click here to get the file table. So then you see a bit the content of your CSV. So you recognize that's the index column, the folder column, uh, the image when you have a stack, and then the slice name. And in this case, I just have a single category column and no comment. So that's the, the no comment, that's why we have this uh, red exclamation mark, but it's no problem. Then, um, yeah, just set the row ID of the table to uh, the column index here, to make it a bit nicer to visualize. And then we load the image uh, in memory in NIME. And for that, I need to, um, to join uh, the directory and the file names. So depending on the plugin you used, or also depending, rather depending actually on the image, if you had a single image or a stack, the file name might be either in the image column or in the slice column. So for, the, so for this one, then you need to uh, right click to set this information. And well, the image folder column is quite obvious. It should always be folder, but I still give you the choice. If you actually want to rename your column, you can do it. And the um, file name, in my case, it's in the slice column. In some cases, you might not have a slice column, you just might have an image column if you didn't use a stack. So, a uh, slice. And you just press OK, and again, it will turn to um, uh, yellow for you and just go on for execute. The settings are saved in memory, so then if you reload another uh, file with the same formatting, you can just execute all the way. Uh, if you have a large data set, you can reduce a bit the, the, the size of the table to reduce the number of images that are loaded in memory. So if you have like a thousand image, maybe it, it might take a bit of time to load them. Uh, so you can right click here and select what kind of uh, sampling uh, you want to do. So in my case, I'm loading everything, 100% of the data set. But I could just put 50% and then per second uh, um, regularly. Uh, then if you take 50, then it's one out of two and so on. Okay, so we load everything in my case, and uh, here you don't have much to do. So it's already pre-configured to load uh, the image reading the column image paths that was generated here. When we're merging the, the directory and the file name, you see this image path column appears, and you can check it if it's correct. In my case, it is. And then if you now um, go here to the viewer, then you have a view of the, well, let me increase this. You have a view of the table, kind of a bigger view. And at the very end, you have now a column image. And if you click on the image, it's opening the viewer. And in this viewer, also like to use this expand table view, then you can scroll down your table. And it's still interactive, so you can change the image here. Okay, so if you had a multi-dimensional image, uh, I think that would work too here. You would have some uh, slider for the channels and so on. In my case, I just have single channel image, so it's quite straightforward. Uh, yes, one thing I didn't mention, 
all the images in the table are expected for this workflow to have the same extension, the same file format. If it's not the case, then you should change a setting here, which is check file format for each file, which is slower. If you know that uh, all your images are the same format, then you can just leave it there. Just leave it unticked and it will assume it's the same uh, file extension based from the first image. Okay, that's, that's about it for this first um, uh, workflow. So if you're not familiar to, to NIME, try to get used to it. You can also, of course, adapt it to your own need, add, add some nodes, stuff like that, try other, uh, other visualization eventually. Um, then I will go on with the second workflow, which is a bit more, um, slightly more complex, which is about generating the sunburst plot, plot to visualize the distribution of uh, your qualitative features. So it's, you can have a look in the, in the article for more detail. So again, we just load here the, the, the table. Uh, in this case though, we expect a table with a specific formatting. Uh, especially you should have used the, the plugin with the drop down menu because we expect one column per feature. So here we have three features, texture, shape and pigmentation, which we're describing those embryo. So you also have their ROI uh, identifiers uh, referring to the, the, the image J ROI that we use to outline the individual embryos and also some measurement of, uh, of, what, uh, of the intensity. So for this embryo, that was the average uh, gray level, the minimum and the maximum gray level. Well, actually in this case, I will just focus on those for this uh, sunburst plot because it's only qualitative information that we want to know. So basically in this population of embryo, we want to see a bit how much of them are granular, smooth, circular or more elliptical, stuff like this. So really see a distribution. So the second node is uh, to filter uh, the column. So we basically just want to keep the, um, the, the feature columns. To use, you can either double click to put one column to the left or to the right. Uh, so in green are the columns, you should put the column containing your features, okay? And all the rest should be on the left. So from the input table, the initial one, now we just have this. So we really lose uh, kind of individual embryo information because we really want to collapse it and see the view for the whole data set. So th this I will do then in the, in the, following, uh, in the following node. Um, so maybe let me show you quickly how the, how the view looks like. So again, just execute it. And at the very end, there is a, a right click either execute an open views or if you already run it, interactive view, which opens a new uh, visualization window, JavaScript, then rescale it because it's slightly small in the initially. And that, that's how it looks like. Okay, so you have two information on the left, you have the plot and on the right, you have the intermediate result table um, with all the different groups that were represented in your data set. So you see, we basically we have counted how many embryos are granular and circular and with a clear pigmentation. So there are eight of those guys. For another, let's say, combination of phenotypes, so granular circle, but this time a dark pigmentation, we have only four. And this is what is rep represented here as well. Um, so there is one circle per uh, feature and so each level gives you the distribution for this particular feature. So basically, let's say you forget about the two outer circle and we just focus on the first circle. It's, it's just like a, a, a pie chart and then it gives you the distribution for the first feature, which is uh, the texture. So you see the texture can either be granular or smooth and we mostly have uh, granular. So 20, 22 samples are granular. Uh, then the second circle, well, I call it circle actually, yeah. Second level of feature is about the shape of the, of the embryos, which can be either elliptical or circular. And finally, the outer um, level is the pigmentation. So then this is actually a first variable. You decide yourself 
what do you want to put in the middle circle to decide basically the the, the different uh, levels for the feature so the order of the of the circle in this plot you decide them by ordering the columns which is just here column resources so as you can see i chose to have texture shape pigmentation and by doing so you would see that indeed texture in the first is the first one then shape then pigmentation okay so um this plot um well, also, of course, then depending on how you uh, organize your plot, you can kind of extract, uh, it's, it's maybe more obvious to extract some information, um, but it, it can also get pretty complicated at some point, especially if you have a lot of different uh, features. That's why I put like a very, let's say, dummy example with those embryos and, and very simple features so, so that you can kind of relate to it and get familiar with the, with this, the, the plotting, the visualization. Um, so as I, as I showed you quickly before, this plot is uh, quite interactive. So if you over the mouse, uh, you would see it's highlighting some section of the plot and you can see the number of uh, embryos falling in this category. You can even actually click. And now if you click, it, it's fixed, right? And if I click to another section, it's also updating the, the visualization. And there are actually different modes for the mouse. Currently, I'm in the mode focus. Uh, so by clicking on, on, on the focus, you can do this kind of selection. And if you want to get out of this focus, like deselect, you can do this one. So the, the buttons on the left are to activate, and they, are, they work together with the button on the right, which are the deactivate. So if, if I click on this one again, I'm deactivating it, OK? Um, second option is selecting. So um, you can select some fraction and actually it's interactive. So you can see uh, it's, it's interactive with the table. You can see that this particular section, actually it was maybe a bit clearer with the, with the mouse focus, corresponds to the, the combination of feature for embryos with granular texture, circular shape and clear pigmentation, which is indeed the first row, okay, which has eight embryos. Um, so it's interactive. Oh, well, um, let me deselect this. Deselect this guy and deselect this guy. Okay. Well, maybe. Ah, yeah, I see. So yeah, it's interactive in both directions. So if you also select here, it's, uh, it's highlighting. If you select in the table, it's highlighting the corresponding section in the plot. All right. Uh, last option for the mouse is this magnifying glass. And the idea is you can select a particular uh, section of the plot. So now we just look at the smooth embryo, the orange guys, and, and, and kind of uh, simplify to, to just observe this particular subpopulation. So then you can um, well maybe just select this one and, and then you can explore just, now it's only smooth. So simplifying a bit. Now it's basically if we kind of skip the, the uh, texture feature, and just concentrate on the two outer features. Okay, so this this workflow obviously you can um, adapt it to other uh, um, feature, other qualitative features. That's how it was sold. It will auto, uh, it was it will automatically adapt to your number of features. You just have to adapt um, the order of the circle, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing is that in your original table. There shouldn't be a column called sum because it's a column I'm creating for the plot. So if you have if you have a column already called sum in your table, they will conflict and and you might have the the wrong um, information displayed there. All right, think, I think I'm coming to the end of this um, tutorial. You find more information also in the description of the workflow. And yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching till the end.